double click right there. And I'm going to go back to the day five folder. I'm looking for this folder called 3D bear head. Don't bring the folder in because it is a layered document. Don't bring the folder in. So I'm going to select the bear head over here and you can see he's only got one eyebrow and one eye and that's okay. But we need to go down and we need to select under import as we need to switch it over to composition retain layer sizes. And then we'll go ahead and we'll bring that in. So I'm going to open up that composition just by double clicking it. And I do want to also show you what this looks like. Here it is in Illustrator. So the bear originally came from Adobe Stock. And I actually made a couple of changes to it. The first thing that I did obviously was I brought that bear head into a new document and I broke out the parts that I want, that I care about, that I want to be able to move. I didn't like the eye in the old version. So I got rid of the eye in the old version and I made a new eye here. I also made his eyes a little bit bigger. If you look at my example for the animation for uh, this week, um, his eyes really small, but I just thought, it, I thought they were bigger and I thought it would look cooler anyway. So, as we take a look at this, I'm gonna switch over to, move this panel. There we go. I'm gonna switch over to, under view. I'm gonna to go to outline. And you're gonna notice a couple of things here. Because of what I'm gonna do with this, if there are things that normally would have ended right where his head started, and the big example here are his ears. His ears originally tapered down and ended right here along the edge of his head. Because of what I'm going to do here eventually, I need them to keep going. So I just selected those points and pulled them in and tucked it behind his head. Um, it's a really cool technique, but if you've got things, details that are going to be like an ear or maybe hair or something like that, you will have to prepare those assets and make sure that they actually do extend a little bit behind the character head. Because what we're gonna do here is we're gonna end up with something that actually looks almost like 3D animation without having to go to that much trouble. So just so that you know what's going on there and why that is done the way that it is. But again, I broke everything out. Um, You'll understand why I only have one eye here in just a couple of minutes. But um, this is really kind of a cool little thing. I started playing around with it with a student a couple months ago, and she was like, that's so freaking cool. I'm like, this is my new material right here. OK, so we're going to kind of tackle this guy in phases. We're going to start by working on what we actually want his eye to do. And I'm gonna let you kind of decide what you do with his eye, but I'm gonna start off by making his eye blink a couple of times. So I'm gonna move my current time indicator over to the one second mark. And it might not be a bad idea. You, if you take a look at his eye, the iris is the little black ball. Just the plain part of his eye is the white circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal the scale properties for his eye. I know that what I'm going to do right here at this moment is going to cause a problem with the iris, and I will come back and fix that later. So what we're going to do is for the scale of his eye, right at this moment, our scale X and Y is locked together. If I change one, it will change both. So the first thing that I need to do to get him to look like he's actually blinking his eyes is to unlink the X and the Y scale. And again, at the one second mark, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set a keyframe right there for scale. I'm gonna move maybe like three frames ahead, something like that. And I need to figure out which the X or the Y value will cause the eye to scale only vertically. I don't want it to scale horizontally. I only want it to scale vertically. So is it going to be the X value? Nope. It's going to be the Y value. So at one second and three frames, 
I'm going to set the y value. I'm going to change it from 100 to 0, which will, because I just kind of disappears. It's not going to be pretty for a few minutes here. And then I'm going to move to one second and six frames. And I'm going to set that value back to 100. I'm going to go ahead and copy all three of those keyframes by selecting them, Command C. And I'll move on down, I don't know, like two seconds and 15 frames, something like that. And I'll hit Command V to paste those in. And let's just see what that's going to look like. I think you're going to get a feel for kind of what we're going for here. So we kind of get that cool little look that his eye closed. We don't really have an eyelid. You know, we could animate an eyelid. We could create another layer. We can make all that stuff work, but we're going to keep it pretty simple. So we have his eye blinking. And the next thing that we want to do is we want to actually make his eye kind of look around a little bit. So right at this moment, he's kind of looking directly at us. So I'm going to move down to the three second mark. And this time I'm going to animate his iris. And I'm going to animate the position of the iris of the eye. So at three seconds with iris selected, I'm going to tap the letter P to reveal my position properties. And I'm going to click the stopwatch to set a keyframe. I'm going to move down to about three seconds and 15 frames. Make sure I got my selection tool active. I had my anchor point tool active a minute ago. And I'm going to just move his iris up in his eye, just like that. And then I'll move to four seconds. And this time I'll move it down as far as I can without going outside of the shape of it. Actually, I can go outside of his eye a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hide this in just a few minutes, but I could go all the way down to like right there. Let me un unselect that so you can see what that's gonna look like. And then I'm gonna move to four seconds and 15 frames. And I wanna put it back exactly where it was initially. I don't really know what that value was, but I could always go back to my first keyframe for the position of the iris. I could hit Command C, Command V. So now his iris of his eye is gonna kind of move around a little bit there and hopefully look really cool. So he's looking at me, he's gonna blink a couple of times and then his eye is gonna kind of move around. A little wonky right now, but we'll, we'll make it look nice here in just a second. All good so far? All right, sweet. Now, I will tell you this, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and easy ease out on that first keyframe for his iris movement. We could keyframe assistant easy ease in on the last keyframe, and then we could just easy ease on the two in the middle. That'll definitely smooth that out a bit. Let's just see how that looks. A Little bit more fluid there. And I'm going to say, too, that I kind of think that he should blink a little bit closer together. So I'm going to go ahead and move that second set of three keyframes for his blink. I'm just going to scoot him over a little bit closer to the first three. Most people will blink a couple of times. And I think that's just going to look a little bit nicer. And that might necessitate if you wanted to, you could just kind of grab those other keyframes and just kind of move them back a little bit earlier in the timeline if you wanted to. Totally up to you totally up to you. Cool. Okay, so let's fix our problem with his iris. When we get down here to this third keyframe for the position of his iris, we have a little bit of an issue here in that his iris is outside of his eye. The other issue that we have is, and that is when he blinks, his iris is still sitting there. We really don't want that to happen at all. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the layer called I, and we're gonna duplicate it. We're gonna press Command D, and we're going to move the new copy. It's called I2. We're gonna move it up and set it above the layer called iris. We can go ahead and we can rename I2 
and we're going to call it Iris Matt, M A T T E. And then for the Iris layer, we do need to be able to see the track mat column. If you can't see that, if down at the very bottom, if you click toggle switches and modes, you'll be able to see the track mat column. But for the layer called Iris, we want to tell it to use the layer above it to determine its transparency. So for Iris, I'm going to come over to the track mat column and I'm going to say alpha mat, Iris mat. And this fixes my problem because now, let me just show you how this is going to work now. Now, as he blinks, when his eye closes, it will actually hide his iris. And then when we get down later, where he actually looks, he's going to look up first, and then he's going to look down. Now his iris won't be outside of his eye. It actually fixes all of those problems for us. So the other thing I want to do here real quickly is I want to animate his eyebrows just a little bit. So I want to animate his eyebrows based on what his eye is actually doing. So again, I'm going to take a look at my iris. I want to see the keyframes right there. So the first movement for the iris, for me, I move my keyframes around a little bit. This is really kind of freeform, but you just want to put your current time indicator wherever that first keyframe is for iris. And you're going to have to decide how you want to animate your eyebrow. You could just animate its position. That would be perfectly fine. Or if you wanted to, you can grab the anchor point for the eyebrow. Oops. Wrong tool. You could grab the anchor point for the eyebrow and put it down there in the corner, kind of like I did for the example that I showed you guys. And you can animate the rotation properties for it. You can even combine those if you wanted to. But at this point, I'm going to go ahead and do the rotation. You could just do position if you wanted to. You choose whatever you want to do. So again, I'm going to do rotation. So I'm going to set a keyframe for rotation right there. When his eye looks up, I'm actually going to pull his eyebrow down just a little bit. Maybe make it overlap his eye just a touch, just like that. Then when his eye moves all the way down to the bottom, I'm going to rotate his eyebrow up really, really high, just like that. It's, it sounds kind of goofy, but it actually looks pretty cool once we put it all together. Then finally, we need to move our current time indicator down and match it up with the position of the fourth keyframe for the iris. And we just need to put it back where it was. And again, I can just select, we're talking about the eyebrow here. I can select the first keyframe for the eyebrow. I can hit Command C, Command V, and that will put it right back where it was. And if I want to do some keyframe interpolation, I can ease out on that first one. I can ease in on the last one. And I can just easy ease on the two in the middle. So let's just preview this and see how this is going to look for us. <laughs> kind of funny. It's going to look better once we get some movement in his head. So that working out okay? All right, if you guys are having any issues at all, don't hesitate to give me a shout. All right, so we have his eyes, or his eye and his eyebrow working great. But we have that little problem in that we don't have a second set of eyes and eyebrows. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all four layers that make up his eye and his eyebrow. And we're going to pre comp all four of those layers. So that's the eyebrow, two copies of the iris, and the eye that we're going to select. I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose pre compose. And the window opens on the wrong screen. There we go. <laughs> and I'm going to call it set of animated eye. Features, 
I know that sounds way over complicated. I tend to do that too often. And then here in the pre-comp dialog box, we want to make sure we have move all attributes into the new composition. We want to make sure we have that selected. And we'll click OK. So now every single thing that makes up his left eye is combined into one composition for us. So now things get really, really cool because we don't need to do this twice. We're just going to duplicate that pre-comp command D. Again, I'm going to reveal scale properties for that layer by tapping the letter S. I'm going to unlink the X and the Y scale. And I think it's the first one. Yep, if I make the first number negative and leave the second number positive, I now have a set of eyes and eyebrows right here that will do exactly the same thing. <laughs> He's already got personality. It's so cool when you do stuff like that. So we're, we're making the Chuck E. Cheese bear here. <laughs> I always call it up Chuck E. Cheese. I don't, I don't know why I, I wanted to do that, but their food was never great. It was just kind of a fun environment, but <laughs> I hear you. Um, okay, so I don't need to do this right now, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it because it's gonna make life easier in the future. And that is I'm gonna select both of those, oops, both of those pre-comps that I just made that, that make up both of his eyes now. I'm going to right click. I'm going to pre-comp those two together and I'm going to call it pair of eyes animated. If I could only spell. There we go. And again, move all attributes into the new composition and click OK. So now every single thing that happens with both of his eyes is in that one layer and I don't have a whole lot of other crap to deal with. So I'm gonna just play that back real quick and just make sure everything looks okay. He blinks, he does that cool little look up and look down thing, pretty happy with that. So now things are gonna get incredibly cool because I'm going to turn on the 3D properties all of those layers. So this isn't really a 3D lesson, but it does some very, very cool things here. So I'm just gonna click and turn all of those on. I'm gonna switch my view from a one view to a two view horizontal. I'm gonna make sure the view on the right is set to active camera. And I'm gonna make sure the view on the left is set to top. So I want to make sure the view on the left is set to top so that I'm looking down on it from up above. So now we have to think about our bear and we have to think about where all of those different parts would be positioned in Z space. So his ears are further back on his head. So we want to select the ear layer and on the left screen over here, we want to grab the Z axis and we want to push his ears back. Now, as I push him back, they kind of disappear behind his head a little bit. So if I wanted to, I could use my Y axis and I could kind of pull them back up. I don't want to pull them up too far because I want part of that to be hidden back there behind his head. The next thing, if you're thinking from farthest away from us to the closest would be the actual shape of his head. So I'm just gonna grab the shape of his head and push it back just to touch. Again, we may have to come back and readjust his ears a little bit back there and just kind of make sure everything is exactly where it should be. I'm gonna leave his eyes right where they are because they're slightly in front of the shape of his head. I'm going to grab his snout, which is this kind of pale brown area right here. I'm going to grab that and I'm going to pull it out to about right there. Now I hide his nose and his mouth. That's okay. And I'm going to pull his nose and mouth out about the same distance in front of 
everything else. Something like that. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. I'm gonna go through my layers here again so that you can just kind of compare and make sure that you have yours spaced out the same way. The, the thing to keep in mind is farther down on the list and the layers should be the farthest back away from me. So as we work up that list, they should progressively get closer to the, to the camera, the imaginary camera that we have in our scene. So his ears are pushed back here. The actual shape of his head is back here. The pre-comp that contains his eyes is this big, huge layer right here because it's pre-comp that looks at the entire size of the composition. So that's why that looks like it does. His snout is pulled forward pretty significantly right here. Then his nose and his mouth are about the same distance. You know, if you wanted to, you could pull his nose out just a touch more if you wanted. That would be okay to do that. And I pulled it too far because now I can see that little line back there. So I'm going to have to move his nose up just a touch. There we go. So this is a good time to go. Do I like the way he looks or do I think we need to scale anything a little bit nicer? Um, for me, it's like I think his ears might be a tiny bit small. So with his ears selected, I'm going to tap the letter S and I'm going to scale those up just a bit. And that also may require me to kind of scoot them down just to touch to get them back kind of where they needed to be. Um, if I don't really like the positioning of anything there or the scale of anything, this really is the time to fix it. You can certainly come back later and make changes to it and make it look nicer if you want to. But this really kind of is the, the best time to do that. So this is kind of weird. We've got this odd, almost as if we've cut these shapes out of paper and we've got them positioned in Z space. So we want to be able to rotate and pivot all of these things together. And they're going to work really well to give us a little bit of perspective change on him as his head moves around. Part of his ear might go more behind his head. His snout might move around. But we need a tool to help us do that. And the way that we're going to do it is we're going to use a null. So I'm going to, down here in my blank area, below my layers, I'm going to right click. I'm going to choose new and select null object. I definitely want to name my null. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to call it bear head control. And the other thing I need to do is I need to turn the 3D switch on for that. So wherever kind of the, the bulk of the bear's head is, that's kind of where the null should be because, you know, we can really kind of decide if you look at a human from the side, you know, our, our head doesn't attach to our torso perfectly in the center of our head. It actually attaches towards the back of the head. So we really could kind of look at the null and say, hey, this is, this is kind of where I want the bear's head to pivot and shift from, even if the bulk of his head is out here in front. So you do have the option of just kind of making that decision where you want that to occur. I'm gonna put it slightly behind this layer right here, which is the outline of the, the bulk of his head. So my null is kind of directly behind that right there. And now all I have to do is select every layer except for the null. And I want to parent all of those layers to the null. So at this point, all I need to do is reveal the rotation properties for my null. I'm going to ignore orientation. I'm only going to use X, Y, and Z to animate my bear. So if you guys, if you want to just kick back for a second, don't, don't keyframe yours yet. Let me just kind of walk you through what you're going to be doing here, and you'll be able to see how incredibly cool this is going to look. So X rotation is going to do this. And notice how his head changes perspective as he nods up and down. Things actually move 
because they are in 3D space. You can't go too far, though. You got to be careful. You can go too far, and then you're like, oh, wow, nothing is, it's just kind of bizarre. So, you know, you, you are going to have to limit your movement to about 20 or 30 degrees, probably right in there. But that is your X rotation. Your Y rotation is this, which again works really, really nicely and looks very much like 3D. Your Z rotation is not going to be all that exciting until you combine it with some of the others. When you combine the Z with something else, it actually ends up looking really, really cool. So let's go ahead and work out a couple of things here uh, that need to sync up. And then you guys can go back and you can add some additional keyframe animation to your X, Y, and Z rotations there. But let's go ahead. There's one thing I want to sync up with down here. And it's where he, where he, where his eye, with like the iris of his eye moves. So wherever his iris gets ready to go up, I'm going to say that starts at about, for me, about two seconds and 11 seconds right there. I'm sorry, two seconds and 10 frames. Sorry about that. So what I want to do as his iris moves up, I want to tilt or rotate his head vertically, which is going to be, sorry, X value right there. So I'm going to set a keyframe for X value. And as I'm going to grab my current time indicator and move down the timeline, as his iris is moved up to the top, I'm going to tilt his head down. Don't go crazy. And as his iris has moved down to the bottom of his eyes, I'm going to tilt his head up. It ends up looking really, really cute. And when his irises go back to where they originally were, wherever that occurs, I'm just going to copy that first keyframe for my X rotation, Command C, and I'm just going to paste it right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and play that back. Put a little bit of a pause in there and it would look a little bit nicer, but you'll get the gist of it. So I'm going to go ahead back up to the beginning. And I'm just going to put a couple of other moves in there. I'm going to put a little bit of a Y rotation in there. I'm going to start off at about, I don't know, about 12 frames. And I'm going to make him tilt to the left. And again, I'm just randomly placing these. I don't really have any specific ideas on what I want to do here. I do know that I want to come back to pretty much a straight on shot before he tilts his head up and down. So I'm going to copy that first keyframe and paste it so that he comes back to where he was. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the Z rotation to that. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to match up my keyframes right here. So as I move down here to the second keyframe for the Y rotation, then I can kind of just tilt his head a little bit to that way. I can come down to the other one. And I can tilt his head back the other direction. Just kind of have some fun with it. And then again, I want him to come back where he started. So I'm just going to copy and paste that first keyframe for the Z rotation there. So we're going to do something like that. Need to put some keyframe interpolation in there. But it really does give a nice feel for something that looks very, very 3D. So for all of these rotation keyframes, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to easy ease out on the first ones. I'm going to easy ease on the middle ones. And I'm going to easy ease in on the last ones. Easy ease on the middle ones. Oops. There we go. Let's see if that looks any nicer. So we have a lot of really cool movement going on with the bear. At this point, we really don't need to see the 3D stuff over here, even though it does look absolutely bizarre. 
as you animate and you kind of move it around, you don't really see much of that until you tilt them in that direction. But I'm going to switch back to a single view right here. And um, I'm going to go ahead and have a little bit more fun with this just because I think it'll look really cool if we do. So uh, first things first, I'm going to put a background in here. I'm going to right click down here. I'm going to say new solid. And I'm going to put a nice color background back there. I'm going to do like a nice pale turquoisey bluish green because it just looks good with his little shades of brown. I'll name that layer background. And I just need to move it all the way down to the bottom. So that already kind of helps him look a little bit better. He's not quite as flat as he was. So then if we really want to make things look cool, I'm going to pop a light into my scene. So I'm just going to right click in a blank area. I'm going to choose new light. I am going to go ahead and use a spotlight. And I don't really know about my intensity or my cone angle quite yet. I'll worry about that later, but I am going to go ahead and turn on cast shadows. And I'll click OK. So you can actually kind of already see that things are looking a little bit more interesting. It just it keeps him from looking quite so flat and it really gives his face a sense of depth. It gets those nice shadows around the edges. Now, if you if you move his face too far, it's kind of kind of destroy that illusion. But it just ends up working incredibly nicely for getting that look and that feel of something that really, truly is 3D. So I turn the light on and I added the shadow capabilities to it, but I don't have any parts of his face that are actually casting shadows at this point. I kind of want to make some choices what actually will cast a shadow. I don't want everything to cast a shadow because it's not going to look it. So the first thing that I want to cast a shadow is his head shape. I want to see a little bit of a shadow on his ears. So I can twirl that down. I can go to my material options. I can turn cast shadows on. And you're going to see I have these absolutely horrible shadows on his ears right there. We'll come back and fix all that stuff here in just a second. Um, I'm going to turn it on for his snout. Ugh. Awful. And I think that's it. I don't think I'm going to do it anywhere else. So now I can go back to my light. I can go down to light options. And I can dial back my shadow darkness way, way, way down. I'm going to go down to like about 25 or 30. I really don't want it to be crazy. And I'm going to increase the diffusion a bit. So based on where the light is, that shadow is going to be there. I think I'm definitely going to have to dial that back even a bit more. So I'm just going to dial the shadow darkness back even more maybe increase the diffusion. I think maybe I had my light in a different position last time. I'm going to switch back over to two views for just a second. And I'm going to take a look. I'm going to switch my left panel from top. I'm going to switch it to left so that I can actually see where the light is located right there. And I'm going to pull the light down just a touch. Maybe move it back in Z space just a bit. And then aim it more kind of straight on at his face. So my shadows will behave more like I actually want them to. And that's going to help things out quite a bit. All right, so I'm going to switch back to one view now. And now let's take a look there. So our shadows are going to be there. I still think I might have it just a little too dark on the shadows. It definitely requires you to kind of play around with that and decide how you want that to look. But we end up with this really, really cool look for this dude, whereas he really almost looks like he's a real 3D character here. We get that sense of Z space and movement with his face. My RAM preview finish up here. There 
yeah. And honestly, the more movement you give his face, kind of the better off you're going to be. If he had some really subtle movements, you know, outside of the times where he's making these really big movements, we, we rarely sit completely still. And, you know, an animal's not generally going to sit completely still unless they're kind of on the hunt and they're trying not to be noticed by whatever it is that they're tracking. I can promise you that's the case by watching my cats. Um, but if we had a, just a little additional movement in there for, um, for our dude's face, that probably wouldn't help. I'm going to go back and reveal those keyframes again up there and just kind of maybe take a look here and just see if there's anything else I might want to add. Maybe just a little Z rotation right there. And then just kind of keep that going. And let's just see. So very, very subtle movements on his face will give him even more of a sense of life. So I just went in and put a little bit of extra Z, which kind of makes his head tilt back and forth, which is almost like, you know, the classic picture of the dog when you're talking to the dog and the dog tilts his head like he understands you. So hopefully this will give him even a little bit more, a little bit more personality and kind of that look here. And again, you don't have to do this with just a bear. You could do it with a person. You could even take a photograph of a person, cut the photograph apart. You're going to have to have a couple of layers for hair because hair does weird things. I don't have to worry about it, but hair does weird things. So, you know, you definitely need to see your ears. You're going to need some hair behind the ears, a little bit of hair in front of the ears so that as they tilt around, like part of the ears covered, maybe revealed at different times and stuff like that. But it actually works out really, really nicely for um, creating that kind of fake 3D look there. All right, there we go. Yeah, just adding that little tiny bit of rotation to me really helped quite a bit. Just that little extra bit of, I do have a, let me fix that. Um, I should have made sure that my keyframe down here at the end was exactly the same value as my keyframe at the beginning. So I'm gonna hit that keyframe right there and I'm gonna hit delete. And I'm gonna grab that keyframe right there, command C, command V. And now he will loop. Wasn't paying attention there. Yep. That's the lights and the shadows. If I turned on motion blur, we'd be sitting here at old two o'clock this afternoon, something like that. But he just looks so happy and cute. Oh my God. So just that extra little bit of movement there really tends to help quite a bit. So cool. How do you guys feel about that? Was that was that a neat thing to do? Was that okay? Okay. Yes, I love it. I love hearing that. Okay, so I hope I didn't go too fast with all the keyframing and everything in there. Just know that you can certainly go back and you can play around with the keyframing on your null. If you don't like the way it looks, you know, you can just go in there and blow away all those keyframes and start again. Um, I sat down, it's like I every time I do something new. I'll sit down and I'll write really detailed instructions. And after I did this, I was like OCD in the keyframes. And I had like two pages of keyframe, where they are, what time they are, what value I set. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> we're not going to do that. I'm just going to let you guys play around with it. But don't be afraid to experiment. You can always start off by just animating one of those properties. And then you can go in and layer in keyframes of an additional rotation in one of those axes. And at that point you can go, you know what? I don't, I liked it better before. You go delete those keyframes and then go add in a third one and just kind of play around with it. But um, it works really, really nicely. And again, this is all kind of self-contained right here. If I didn't have that background in there, 
I could take this whole comp and put it into another composition, and just put it right on top of his body. As long as he's facing me in this instance, the other thing would be if I was looking at a horizontal where he's walking or running, you know, I could have him looking at me, but I would have to move his head in a way that it made sense and it looked right. He can be looking directly at me. You see that in cartoons all the time, but he wouldn't be looking around and just kind of doing random shit um, in that particular instance. Cool. All right, I'm gonna show you one more example and then we will call it quits for today. And I'll, I'll warn you ahead of time, I did not name this file. So from the project panel, I'm gonna double click. I'm gonna go back to the day five folder and I'm gonna find Paul the Pickle. He is layered. Paul the Pickle does have layers. So I'm gonna come down and choose import as, composition retain layer sizes. I'll click okay. Just click OK in the dialog box right there. And then we will open up the composition right there 